it's now Sunday in the morning, 8.15 or so. I'm just getting ready and then I head to the Google office again for the second day in the last day of the CTF. So we are getting now a second attempt at the bomb challenge. We are ready. Why does Google have this? <laughs> 10 is missing. OK, 10 is, 10 is the output of Q5. That's it? That's correct? Yeah, to, to Q5. Okay, do you know about the riddle challenge? No. Um, do you know about riddle? The no. So riddle is one of the one of the CPU bugs in riddle is one of Intel only, I think. Um, and was pu made public like half a year ago. And nobody ever released a POC for this. Like it's there's no no public POC as far as I know. I saw some repo where they have a POC but it didn't work when I tried it. Um, so I decided to make a challenge where just like, here's code without a bug inside, here's a link to the paper and the slides, just implement that and leak the flag. And, and were there any solves yet? There were five solves oh. after the first day. Okay. So I think the first one was around, after around six hours. So the best team took around six hours after release. Um, we actually had to change one of the other challenges because we figured out the same exploit will work for this one as well. Oh, wow. So we had to like run it on a single core so that the, that is not affected. But yeah, cool. And that's it. Nice. Thank you. I'm Pedro. I, w I was the technical leader of the crypto category, and I also made one crypto challenge. One crypto challenge. What's the name of the crypto challenge? Fractalization. Okay. So can you give us just like a, a gist of what the challenge is about? Okay. Uh, it's an RSA challenge, mm -hmm. and the goal is to factorize uh, an RSA modulus. Yeah, in general, that's uh, the idea. Yeah. And of course, like I mean, I'm aware of like the basic RSA kind of challenge where yeah. I don't know the the factorization is already in yeah. FactorDB or something. No, this is the cool part of the challenge because if you use general CTF tools or if you use some factor general factorization algorithms or just try FactorDB, you are not going to find anything. Mm -hmm. But uh, we did, and we also didn't provide the source code of the key generator. Mm -hmm. It was on purpose. But actually, the private key, the, the their uh, private key, it was encrypted with AES ECB, and people that are usual with crypto, they know that AES ECB has a, a known vulnerability, a known problem that if you encrypt like some plain text using the same key, and the, if you do that many times the result will always be the same mm -hmm. so it can leave some patterns in this cipher text yeah so this uh private the private key that i i provided the encrypt it encrypted it's it's possible to see that on this encrypted private key some patterns in the aes ecb the the private key contains the primes so people will know that the primes contain some repeat, repetitively uh, patterns. Mm. So there are some uh, latest-based algorithms that can be used to factorize the the, the model is based only on this information. Okay, so the the private key is pretty large, can't be factored with 
regular standard tools yeah. but the kind of like the search space is basically minimized because of uh, they are repeating uh, patterns that with AACCB you can be. see that the blocks are the same and yeah, yeah. they're the same so uh, I've studied computer science so I've okay. had some math background obviously but it's also already now a couple of years back so can you try you know it doesn't have to be school level math but also not the highest math thing how does this kind of algorithm kind of work or what are the terms if somebody would want to look into how this algorithm works to uh, factor or something like this okay uh so basically based on this information okay so the one of the primes it has a repetitive mm -hmm. bit patterns so you if you represent this prime as a fraction okay mm -hmm. so some number uh, some numerator divided by some denominator using some uh, lattice based methods uh, the result if you create a matrix the result will be actually a, a multiplier of this prime so now if you have a multiplier of this prime and you calculate the GCD between this multiplier and the modulus you get the prime mm -hmm. So yeah, basically this is the idea. I know that some people uh, can solve it using other methods like uh, Coppersmith. There are some things that you can do with Coppersmith, but using this uh, lattice uh, method, it, I think it's a simple way to, to solve it. Mm -hmm. So you don't find it in, in general uh, CTF tools. Uh, but in some academic papers, you can find it. Mm -hmm. Actually, this this algorithm was an idea of Daniel Blaschenbacher, and I implemented it for a challenge, for a CTF challenge. He he also validated the, the challenge in the end. Is it? Oh, okay. Is it the Blaschenbacher from the, from the Blaschenbacher attack? Or yeah, it's the same person. Yeah. Okay, Sorry. yeah, that, that yeah. was my question. Okay, <laughs> he's also a Googler, apparently. Yeah, yeah. Okay, interesting. For me, always crypto was very hard because I do like math, but I never kind of was able to get my head into it. If if I think there are many people like me out there who kind of studied computer science, had some like the basics introductions in uh, in calculus and all that stuff, uh, but but never like, if they would try again to learn a bit more of the advanced math and understand like these kind of papers mm -hmm. to get into these kind of CTF channels. Do you have any recommendations regarding that? Uh, play CTF and usually combine the CTF knowledge with academic knowledge. Mm -hmm. Because if you just play CTF, you usually you 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 are you focus too much only on the CTF problems. But the people that that publish papers that do the actual academic work, they have a lot of new things that they publish all the time, new things, new research. So yeah, I think combining those two things, playing CTF plus doing some academic work, academic research, it's, it's a good plan. Uh, in terms of tooling, like what does somebody that saw CTF crypto challenges uh, use? Is it like MATLAB? Like is, is that literally like the tools that, these kind of tools that are being used? Uh, the solution for this challenge, we use it Sage mm -hmm. because it has some nice algorithms for solving LLL reductions, lattice reductions. I usually use Sage. Okay, or same. Python, Sage and Python. Yeah, cool. Thank you so much for your time. Bring in the sweat roll level 8. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in the building. <laughs> Google security. Will it be, do you think it's reliable? You expect? 50 50. 50 50, okay. We'll see.
，然后给他剪下去，他们自己，还没有四分之一，还三分之一吧，不剪一定是错。差一点呢，我已经差不多看完了。Okay, now the all teams have completed the bomb challenge and we will deliver the flags to the teams which have solved the challenge successfully in the order of the least time of solve. Thank you, all the flags have now been delivered. <laughs> And he's ready to enter the flag if we see Calc. Right, three, two, one. Ah. Uh, I'm very sorry. <laughs> so close. So close. How does it feel? Not so good. <laughs> <laughs> like this. Basically, uh, I will pass the microphone to Jim in a second, who will say a few words. Then we will do the CTF task presentations, the intended solutions really quickly, and then we will ask everyone to go upstairs. So during the presentation, feel free to pack your stuff, because around 7 we will have to go upstairs for dinner and celebrations, and award ceremony as well. So this challenge was about uh, factorizing uh, RSA models. So actually, we didn't provide the source code for how we generated the primes, the RSA key, but we provided the private key encrypted with AES-ECB. And it, there is a very known problem with AES-ECB that it maintains the bit patterns if the inputs are the same, if the, the plain text and the key remain the same. So analyzing the encrypted private key, you could see the bit patterns there. It was in one of the primes. So using some uh, triple L reduced uh, algorithms, lattice reduced algorithms, you could actually, for example, represent P as a fraction, like as a fraction like this. And after solving the, uh, the matrix like this using triple L, you actually would get some value that is a multiple of one of the primes, so basically just calcula calculating the GCD of this number that you get and the, the modulus, you get the the prime, so that's it. Then you can just do the usual RSA steps. <laughs> you who are new to Escalate, we had three parallel events running. We had the CTF finals, which 10 teams participated in. We had the bug swap program, which is for our top vulnerability hunters in Google products. And we had Inner G, which was a student event where they came and learned and watched all those wonderful things that you guys were up to. With that being said, I'd like to invite Ginval Coldwin to the stage to announce the winners of the CTF 2019. Okay, so uh, before we announce the winners and the top three, uh, there, as, you, as some of you know, there has been some mis 
well, a problem with a, a flag submission not really finishing at the time we said it's finished. Actually, there was one more team which submitted a flag later on, and we didn't notice until uh, like half an hour ago. So you might find a typo on some of the checks, but we have corrected everything, and everything is according to the rules now. <laughs> Perfect. So with that great introduction, third place, spam and hex. <laughs> Congratulations, and Spam and Hex got 1,950 points. The first place with 3,350 points, but you all know who it is. It's Pastan. The winners of Google CTF 2019. So 5PC, second place, congratulations. It's Gadget Overflow. G'day mate, how's it going? How's the subscriber count going? Not so well as it is for you. Look, don't Subs worry, you'll get there. Thank you so much. Subscribe to Gadget Overflow. So yesterday was the last day of the CTF and we got a second chance at the bomb. Unfortunately, it also failed. But in the end, uh, only one CTF team solved the challenge, but also one VRP team, so from the Bug Bounty Hunters, uh, they also got a chance and they and they solved it, so pr that's pretty impressive. Right after the CTF, the authors of the challenges, so the Googlers, would come up to stage and explain their solutions to the challenges. And I think that is really, really awesome because as a CTF player, you wonder what the solutions are. And it is fun after the CTF to go to other teams and ask around. But you can still do that and you just get a quick overview of what the solution was. And I think that is so great and it's so helpful and adds to it, I think. Afterwards, we had to quickly pack up and then head upstairs to a different floor where there was kind of like an after party. Uh, we got some food, there were drinks, and they also did the award ceremony there. So yeah, the first three places got some, some money and the first uh, place got to hold the trophy. And also the back hunters got also uh, some gear they were drawn out of a hat and they could select some some of the stuff yeah and there i had just awesome conversations with a lot of different people from other ctf teams i've never met before i talked to some of the students from energy um, yeah so it was a uh, was just really fun then of course offices have to get shut down at some point so we got kicked out uh, of the google office at some point then i went with some of them into a pub near the hotel and mostly those were VRP people, so bug hunters. And so had more awesome conversations with those. It's, it's so interesting, uh, their perspective on security and Google products. And basically all of them were saying, uh, there's nothing special about it. It just requires some time. And also people are scared of it to look f at Google for bugs because they think that they can't find anything, but that's the only reason why they can still find stuff because people are too scared to do it. Like, like me, I'm, I'm too scared to find stuff on Google. And so I'm the kind of person, I'm the reason why they are still finding bugs because uh, they are the only ones doing it. If you had some concerns, if you should try it, I, I think you should try it. I mean, that's basically what all of them said. You just need to do it. And I know it takes time and a lot of effort and stuff, but persistency, discipline, that's basically all it is. After the pub, we went to a fast food restaurant and grabbed a quick bite. And then we went back to the hotel where we met a couple of other people, uh, some of the CTF players. This is where Redford released the first ever public POC of uh, Riddle exploit. It was kind of funny because he was kind of pressured into releasing it. And he had to replace a lot of variable names because uh, he originally used Curva and he had to replace it to make it, you know, fine for the public release so i stayed there for a bit but got really tired so i think i went to my hotel room at like 3 a.m 3 30 a.m around that time and so i i went straight to bed and now i'm awake need to quickly pack and then my flight leaves at like 4 p.m so i have plenty of time i will just sit around in the lobby 
maybe walk around a little bit or so. So I hope you really enjoyed this whole journey. Let me know what you think about it. What did you think about the event? How, does, how did that look like? Any feedback for Google to make it better? And any feedback for me to make videos like this better? It's the first time I tried to use such a fancy camera. So I'm sorry for all the blurry footage or all the wrongly exposed footage. I think in overall, I'm still pretty happy with the result.